Hello again, my friends. This is Kanita, and I greet you warmly on this drizzly, kind of cool and cloudy Saturday morning. I greet you warmly in the name of our risen Lord, Yeshua, Almighty God, and I welcome you back to the podcast. In the book of Matthew, we find this phrase, let me get a little bit adjusted here a little bit better. In the book of Matthew, we find this phrase spoken by our Lord, the light of the body is the eye. The light of the body is the eye. The eye is the lamp, the body, an entrance to the soul, a pathway to the spirit. And the Lord tells us if our eye be singly minded, focused, focused on the affairs of Almighty God, then our soul will burn with holiness and our, st- our spirits, our very spirits will shine with the glory of Almighty God. Peter, in his astonishment, as he reached out to the Lord upon the waters, could walk upon the water only so long as he kept his eye fixed on the light, the living light that was the Lord of God, the Lord our God. It was not until he took his eyes off the Lord in concern for conditions around him that he began to sink. You see, my friends, the believer's eye is singularly focused on the truth that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. And as he walks only in that light, feeds off of that light and becomes absorbed within it. Then will his whole body be filled with light and this light will be reflected and amplified clear down to the DNA levels. And here, my friends, it will change us fundamentally from creatures of this world and its darkness into living beings of his light. This is the testimony of our Lord on that day. And this is why we are cast aside, shunned and hated in this world. It is because it is because of the light we see that they do not see. The truth we hear, they cannot hear. And the light that lives within us, that they do not know. You see, my friends, when we have been transformed through the light of the living God. We are no longer like them. As it says in Proverbs, the hearing ear and the seeing eye, the Lord had made even both of them. We are no longer like them, and they know it. Because the eye of the worlder is not singular. It cannot be singular. For he fears the singularity of light, so he dwells in the subliminals and in the shadows and shades of life that are limited to this physical world, the only one he knows. He dwells in darkness because he is comfortable in the darkness. Here, here within this darkness, he prospers. Now, it is true that darkness is simply the absence of light. Yet the spiritual darkness that man has assumed into himself, that we see in man every day and throughout the ages, is not simply the absence of light, my friends. It is a malevolent, predatory evil. It beguiles, it ensnares, and it betrays. And then it demands, then it commands, and then it executes. The worlder's eye is not singular. It cannot be singular because he sees not the light. Therefore, the worlder's eye has to become a compound eye. Because he cannot find his way alone in the darkness in which he lives, he needs and uses the external eye of one who he believes is above the darkness 
simply because he had a wider field of vision. And he uses this in order to gain wealth and power or success in this world. But in this bargain, my friends, he accepts the compound eye of darkness, the all-seeing eye of evil, and he joins into the hive mind. He joins in to the body of Satan. And at that point, he is cut off from the light forever, forever. The evil eye soars as a falcon in the clouds to find prey below. Until the next time, my friends, have a wonderful day in our risen Lord. Goodbye.